So I'm on Redbubble and I'm going to click in the little search window and you can see what comes up is trending searches. And one of the most common piece of, pieces of advice that I see on YouTube is people saying, here's how to detect trends, here's niche marketing, here's how to ride a trend, here's how to take advantage of a trend. And look, I've been guilty of it myself. I try to chase trends as well. But I'm going to throw something out there in this video that might be a bit unique. I actually, on the whole, I don't really like trends and I don't really care about trends personally and I don't really use trends. So I thought, you know what? I wanna be authentic. I wanna show you guys my strategy and I don't actually go with trends. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through what I do instead of trends because you're probably thinking, well, that's great. You're telling me to ignore the trends. What should I be doing instead? That's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. So I've tested this out and I got to say, I think that this trending searches is maybe a little more overblown than it is. I don't want to say it's complete malarkey or complete baloney, but I do wonder sometimes about these trends. Like it says trending searches cat versus tiger, or it says free Britney. Well, I can understand the free Britney one because Britney Spears is a celebrity and I can understand maybe certain trending topics, but I've seen some random stuff in here over the last couple of years. The one that got me was it was, uh, racing. It was like a, it was a racing term. And I was like, why is that a, like, why is that a trending item? And so I looked up the trend. There was hardly any designs in the trend. I created like 200 designs in that niche and I sold like one and I'm thinking, okay, this can't be trending if I dominate the entire trending niche and there's still no sales. So I, I feel like these trending searches, if I'm being completely honest with you, and this is my opinion, my opinion only, I feel like these trending searches become trending searches because so many Redbubble artists are on here looking at the trending searches. And I don't think that we've got throngs of people from all over the world necessarily wanting to free Britney. I think me as an artist, I click on this and I go, ooh, trending searches. Let me click on that. And then I look at it and I go, okay, there's only 2,100 results. Okay, well, how about I'll put some in there and then I upload. And then Redbubble goes, oh, there's lots of people uploading in there. Hmm. And there's lots of people looking in there. Well, yeah, it's because it's all of us. All of us artists are just chasing our own tail and we're whipping ourselves into a frenzy about trends that aren't necessarily trends. So again, I'm not saying that's true in every case. Please, you know, feel free to disagree if you want. My feelings aren't hurt. I've just personally found it's not a huge driver of sales for myself. So I'm going to show you what to do instead. So you might say, well, hold on, let's type in COVID because that's probably the number one trending item from the last 12 months. So surely people are buying COVID items. I mean, after all, there's 326,000 COVID designs. Surely somebody is making sales. And it's like, sure, but that's my whole point is there's 300 plus thousand designs in here. Like there's 300,000 designs, good luck getting something on the first page or second page or even the 10th page. So my attitude is I just steer clear of this. This is like Times Square before the pandemic where everybody's on top of everybody. I'd rather just go find my own little niche where there's not a lot of people. Now I'm not going to get a ton of sales, but it's all about the sales demand versus the amount of designs that exist. So you just have to find one that's in your favor. It doesn't need to be a large amount but it just needs to be enough that you find more people interested than there are designs. So what I look at instead is really, really specific niches. And I don't care if they're trending or not, don't care. And what I look at is locations. I look at identities. That's another big one. So I'm going to talk about identities in this one. And what I mean by that is somebody's wearing the shirt because they identify on some level with the identity they're in inside the shirt. So for example, I've typed in the word doctor and you know, this is 180,000 results. Now immediately we go, Oh my goodness, that's too many. That's fine. I just typed into the old Google here, list of medical professions. Well, there's physician, technician, pharmacist, technologist, there's dietitian. I'll just pick one at random here. How about dietitian? So I type that in. Dietitian. And we get 1300 results. So if someone is actually a dietitian, 
they're, they're really going to like love a shirt because that's how they identify. They don't identify as a foot doctor. They don't identify as a podiatrist or a proctologist. They identify as a dietitian. So imagine if you've got a friend in your life that is a very specific uh, profession. Maybe they just finished, finished accounting, but get more specific than that. Are they a first year accounting student? Are they just a recently graduated accounting student? Are they like, an, like a, for example, if they're a physician before someone becomes a doctor, they might be, you know, uh, they might be a, a resident, a resident doctor. Well, that's very, spe that's very specific. They might be a paralegal instead of a lawyer. So there's all these different types of professions and you can drill down into these professions and you can say, okay, you know what? Dietitian powered by coffee. Okay. Dietitian gamer legend, future dietitian. I mean, these are really specific, right? And there's only a thousand results. And they, I mean, you know, this is Redbubble. You're probably going to get a thousand results for almost anything, unless you go really micro. But you could certainly pump up a hundred designs into here, especially if you're passionate about that genre. So really give yourself a think and go, okay, what is it in my life? Who are my friends and what are their professions? And then really drill down and be specific. If they work in finance, are they accounts receivable? Are they accounts payable? Are they an invoicing clerk? Are they a supervisor? What is their role exactly? And then drill down on that because you're not, you're not going to get a massive swell of customers for that. But I've had success with this because even though there may be only a thousand designs, the people that are looking in that niche, they're really looking in that niche. Okay, so enough talk. I can read your mind and you're thinking, can you show me an example, please, of how you drill down into a micro niche? So here is you know, a niche that's not trending. I don't care if it's trending or not. So here's Canada. This is where I live, all right? I'm in Canada, 182,000 results. That's way too many results. So I'm not interested in making designs with Canada as my main tag. Now, I'll probably include it, but it's not my main tag. So what do I do? I start looking at different cities cities where I used to live, cities where that are near to me, wherever it is, right? So this is Thunder Bay. And if you've never heard of Thunder Bay, you're not alone. I used to live in Thunder Bay a hundred years ago. And Thunder Bay is in a province called Ontario, kind of in the middle of the, the country. And it's like February there and it's like super cold. So if you're from Thunder Bay, God bless you because it is freezing all the time, but the summers are beautiful. Anyway, Thunder Bay has 758 results. That's, that's doable. I mean, you know, if you're looking at niching down, now what if we said even a smaller town? There's a little tiny town called Sudbury. Sudbury is also in Ontario, 404 results. Okay, now we're talking. Well, what if I went and I really niched down and I combined niches and I said Thunder Bay Nurse? Well, there's nothing, there's zero results. So I only use this as an example to show that you can get to zero. It is possible. I know it can feel a bit depressing because you type in cat and you get 18 million billion results and you go, oh my goodness, there's a niche for everything. Like every niche has a design. And it's like, no, there's lots of niches that don't have any designs. So I've done this 10, 20, 30 times where I found a niche where there are no results. And I go, well, let me put 30 in and see what happens. I'm the only guy in that with that keyword. Now, I'm not going to get a ton. I mean, how many nurses are there in Thunder Bay? A couple hundred. But over time, there's going to be new nurses. Nurses graduating, graduating in Thunder Bay. Nurses moving to Thunder Bay. And then I can just scale this up. Now there's nurses in Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie, Toronto, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, Moncton. The list goes on and on. And whatever country you're in, you're the expert in that country. So there's just literally like 10,000 cities that you could experience extrapolate any design to if you've got the right keywords and their chances are at least some of them will have very little or no results. Here's another pretty popular niche. My wife, my wife actually told me about this niche and she said, you know, can you make me a shirt that says world's okayest sister? Because she's got a brother and the two of them are, you know, pretty good friends. And she thought that was really funny. World's okayest sister. So I typed in world's okayest into Redbubble and there's 9,000 results. And I thought, oh, every good idea in the world is gone. But hold on. World's okayest DM, world's okayest runner, world's okayest miniature painter, photographer, swimmer, baker, nurse, pilot, 
the list goes on and on. There's the sister. That one's not mine, but I might just buy that one instead of making my own. But there's a bunch in here that you can look at. Now, how many different identities does a human being have? Mother, daughter, wife, sister, dad, brother, teacher. The list goes on. And I mean, you could spend the whole day. If you really challenged yourself and said, you know, write everything down where you could be the world's okay as something. No wonder there's 9,000. So I'm not looking, 9,000 is not my competition. It's world's okayest, and then whatever the tiny little sub niche is inside of it, 40, world's okayest plumber. How many plumbers are there in the world? It's a lot more than 40, I'll tell you that. So again, it could be anything, lifeguard, fireman, the list is literally endless. So it's a popular niche, but I don't care if it's trending or not. I drill down and find a tiny niche and then I go, okay, there's 40 results. Let me double that. Let me get that to a hundred and 60 of them will be mine. That means if anybody buys in that genre, there's a 60% chance that they will buy my design. That's pretty good odds. So I hope you found that helpful. A couple examples for you. And this is just a big overview of why I don't really care about trending niches.